Hey there, let me show how to debug Rust applications using WinDebug. It's been a while since I've made a new WinDebug video. Been a bit busy with a new application which is written in Rust. I have been debugging that application using WinDebug. Rust, if you don't already know, is a programming language that can build native applications. The syntax is easy to read and is very C-like. I won't really go into detail on how Rust works, but let me show you how to debug it using WinDebug. If you would like to install Rust on Windows, I will put a link in the description below on how to get the Rust installer. My Rust setup is basically just Rust on a computer that has Visual Studio 2022. Rust is building the application using Visual Studio, so that means WinDebug works perfectly. Let me switch to my application over here. This application is just a bare bones application to demo how to debug Rust using WinDebug. The program just has a main that calls myfunc, which is just a function that has permutations of Rust, which is kind of unique, and it's just to show a demo. The application is actually being built from Visual Studio, so there's nothing in the setup that is interesting. It's just the bare bones minimum application that can be compiled on Windows to build a Rust application. So to build the application, I'm just going to use Cargo. So I'm just going to run Cargo build. Because this machine already has Visual Studio 2022, the compiler is going to execute and it's going to actually generate a target, the debug target and there's going to be an executable and there's going to be a PDB. This PDB is a debug PDB. Uh, we, we can't see the text over here because it's all binary. But when we load this into WinDebug, it will understand all the syntax of Rust and it will be able to debug within Rust. To run the application, we just run the hello world executable. One of the simple ways to just type cargo run, which will just automatically choose the executable. So the executable that it chooses is the debug executable. All it does is just print a whole bunch of values that is being mutated. When we debug with WinDebug, I'll show you something different on what's happening within Rust that is different from other native applications. The major difference that I want to show is a concept in Rust which is called shadowing. Notice that the variable over here, this is a variable, a mutation called X. I declare it many times and I declare other variables called X. And this is not legal in C or C++ because you can't declare variable more than once, but you can in Rust. So when we debug in WinDebug, we're going to see something a bit different. Let me switch over to an instance of WinDebug that is already attached to the program that we want to run. Loading the program is as simple as just going to file, choosing the executable to run, putting in all the details and running the program is exactly like any other executable. WinDebug is currently waiting at the initial breakpoint. Let's just search for the function myfunc. It's downloading the symbols. There we are. So the function myfunc is located at this memory address. Let's just put a breakpoint on it and run the debugger. There we are, we've hit the breakpoint. So far, everything I've shown is exactly the same as any other native debugging. But let's do something different. Let's step through this function while looking at the local variables and try to see the value of x. So if I go to view and I view local variables over here, I get that the value of x is not available. So let's just step through this function line by line and see what's up. Now, when I step over, I get that the value of x is going to jump around because this code is uh, slightly a bit optimized. If I step over the value of x, I get that the value of x is 5. And then when I step over again, I get that the value of x is 6. Now, that is correct because x is a mutatable variable. So the value has changed from 5 to 6. But what happens if I step across this other let over here? So let's do that. So if I step one more time and I step one more time, I see that the value is still 6 even though it says 5. That is correct because in Rust, value of variables can be shadowed. This is somewhat of a limitation in WinDebug's locals view. But if I go to command and I type dv, this works slightly different. The dv command will actually look at the PDB, it will look at the memory address, and even though it's the same variable, it will report both instances. This is a unique feature of Rust. This is how you view shadowing in Rust when using WinDebug. You can't rely on the view of the locals window, it, it doesn't work, but if you type dv, it 
fully works. This also means that if I step across the third instance of X over here, let me just do that. If I go across here and I run DV, I'm going to get three values of X. This is correct because X is the value 5. 5 times 2 is 10. And previously it was also the value 5. And it was changed to 6. So there we are. There's a 6. There's a 5 for this instance right here. And there's a value 10 for this instance right here. Now within native code like C or C++, there are many representations of a string. Um, there's also a string in Rust. So let's step over the S variable over here. And if we run DV, we are going to get a representation of a string, which is uh, hello. Now, the amazing thing about this is that strings in Rust are actually an object. If I click on the S here, it will actually open the object up. WinDebug can actually query within the object and you will get not only the representation of the text over here, hello, every character, you actually get the length and the capacity. This is because in Rust, strings are actually not just null terminated, they are a bit more safer. I won't go into detail how strings are stored in this video, but WinDebug understands because in the PDB, the structure of the string is actually stored within the PDB correctly. So WinDebug is able to look at the object. So even though it is a Rust string, it is fully debuggable within WinDebug. Now, if I step more, it, the program is going to end. Um, there is really not that much difference between any other native application and Rust. There are a few things here and there. So I wanted to really show this video to give some confidence that WinDebug fully works with Rust. I've been writing a fairly large application in Rust. So I've been a bit busy and not making any videos for the last month or so. But I would like to restart making videos for WinDebug. But this time a bit more focused on Rust and a bit on Python because I find that these languages are really being used today and I have not made any videos about Python and I haven't made any videos about Rust even though I use it really often. So I'll, I'll be making more videos about Rust and I thought I'll just make this video about shadowing and the string just to get it started. There are many aspects of Rust that I contemplated putting in this video but I did not want this video to be too long. So I thought the simplest thing to do was just to show an Hello World application with the most basic concepts of Rust. But I will be making more videos about Rust in the coming weeks and maybe I'll be making more complex videos about Rust where I'll use memory dumps and other kinds of analysis of WinDebug on Rust applications. Anyway, let me know in the comments below if you have used WinDebug with Rust or you have debugged memory dumps using WinDebug of a Rust application. Gentle reminder to subscribe, give a like and hit that notification button to be notified of new videos. As always, it's been a pleasure bringing you this information. I am High Voice, signing out.